Greetings YouTube! This is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001 bringing you a review of Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Ripclaw! Um, the first uh, Beast Hunters figure that won me over. Um, if you're wondering about my opinion of Beast Hunters, uh, the season hasn't started yet, so I'm not going to judge the quality of the show. Although it looks like it's going to be pretty good, because I do love the Transformers Prime show, and I'm interested to see what they're going to do introducing the Predacons to this continuity. But as far as the toys are going, I'm not really that cool with the uh, Mad Max aesthetic uh, that the things have. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, a lot of the the Autobots look like they just jumped out of a uh, an 80s post-apocalyptic movie and a lot of the Decepticons look absolutely completely ludicrously stupidly insane uh, like like uh well uh, just take a look at Starscream I mean look at that that is so ridiculous and Bulkhead um, he look okay uh, except that his head kind of looks like a bull, and he's deluxe class now. Bulkhead as deluxe. That just doesn't work. Uh, Smokescreen gets off pretty easy, since he didn't have an original figure. Rather than making two figures, they, uh, they just, they just made regular Smokescreen and then gave him removable armor. So you can actually choose to have him look like a Mad Max-style atrocity against aesthetics. <clears throat> Okay, but like I said, that's uh that's about the show. That that that's just my personal qualms with Mad Maxine aesthetics. Um, okay, let's talk about Ripclaw. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is her card. Um, I don't normally bring this up, but check out her technical stats. Uh, usually, female Transformers, and yes, Ripclaw is a female Transformer. Um, you they have a high speed and intelligence and a relatively low strength stat. Uh, you know, the whole speed and agility thing. Um, but Ripclaw has an intelligence stat of four. Four. That's pretty, that's pretty low intelligence. I, I didn't know that any Transformers would have a stat that low. Because it doesn't come up very often. And she's not very fast either. She's six. So she's a female character who basically comes through as a big dumb brawler. Because her skill is 6, her speed is 6, her intelligence is 4. Of course, she's, she's, she's uh, very strong. She has high endurance. She has a pretty good rank, considering how dumb she is. Uh, she's very brave. Of course, she's too, she's too stupid to be, to be scared. And, and she's very powerful. So, yeah. Big, dumb brawler and female. I gotta say, that's kind of original. You're not used to seeing that very often. Um, in my head, she's voiced like one of the Amazonians from uh, the Futurama cartoon. So, what's it like on Cybertron? Big rats there. Me smash with club. Okay, I've spent like three and a half minutes making jokes. Alright, but one more thing before I talk about the figure. Um, the instruction sheet actually comes with a little story that comes in chapters. Uh, I'm not going to read it. You know, I'm going to try and hold it up to the screen. There we go. See if uh, you might want to pause the video and read that. And uh, the, chap the chapter is continued in Bulkhead. Bulkhead's instruction sheet. So it's actually a kind of interesting incentive to collect the entire line. Because you get all the figures, you get to read the entire story. Okay. From now on, we are talking only about the toy. Um, this is, I gotta say, a really good dragon. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's very much a typical depiction of a western dragon. You got the wings on the back. You got the, um, the long legs. Uh, although, you have this big claw tail thing it actually looks like a scorpion tail and the gimmick here is that this is spring loaded so when you push the button it clamps down so she's actually kind of like some kind of chimeric abomination 
combining a scorpion with a western dragon. And I'm okay with that. That's uh that sounds freaking awesome. Okay, um this brown tip of the tail unpegs which releases a soft which releases the joints and allows the soft plastic to take over, making the tail super flexible. Of course, this way the tail can no longer hold poses, but then you think, why does it do that? Well, it's a toy. This is a play feature. You play with it. It doesn't help for display, but it makes it easier to play with, and that's what toys do. Remember that. So yeah, anyone anyone who doesn't like the soft plastic tail, remember, it's not supposed to help with display, it's supposed to help play. Um, one flaw in this mode, her head. It's made out of squinkies. Her head is a squinky. What the hell? Is it because of these fins? I, RC's back points are sharper. Heck, her wings are sharper than this, and they're not made out of squinkies. Why is her head a squinky? Look at this. Let's zoom in on that head. Look at that. No wonder her IQ is six. Her intelligence set is six because her brain has no protection in this thing. Okay. Aside from that, there are no flaws to the dragon mode because this, this is freaking awesome. Um, I don't really have any other beast transformers. I mean that the guy that came in the two pack with thunder that with thunder blast and uh, black arachnia are the only other animal based transformers I have. But uh, she's really cool because um, most most beast formers that I've seen really only look cool in one pose, like standing calmly. But uh, with this expressive ball jointed neck and a wide variety of joints in all four of her legs, she can actually take on really cool poses that you wouldn't typically be able to do with most beast hunt with most beast transformers. So she is a highly posable, highly playable figure in beast mode, which is really awesome. And I'm I'm uh credit where it's due, that's that's really good. That, yeah, that, that's just great. I love how posable she is in dragon mode. Uh, so let's get on to her transformation. Let's zoom out a bit. The center. Okay, so um, the transformation's not all that great. It's basically, you know, stand the beast mode up and kajigger some stuff. Although they do some interesting things, like uh, with the legs. This piece comes off and forms a shin, turning a dog leg into a humanoid leg. That's that's just prime. Uh, her feet are nice and ball jointed. And uh, yep, that's legs. Uh, you get just move her arms out of the way a bit. Um, oh, uh, uh, there's like this shoulder. Like you move it down to be robot mode and up to be beast mode. But it, I think it works well either way. You just fold her dragon claw back all the way around and then rotate her arm. Maybe if I zoomed in just a little more. <laughs> just, uh. Boom. Ah, stop doing things! And, uh, you gotta do something to her torso, like this stomach flaps, you just fold them back, then you collapse the chest down, and, um, she has a little bit of a feminine shape, I mean, it's, she's no RC or arachnid, but you can tell that that's, that is supposed to be a female body, vaguely, a pretty husky female body, but then she's a big dumb brawler. And uh, this leads to her mid-transformation step. Um, if this was her transformation, that could probably still work. Look at this thing. Let's zoom out a bit so you can get a... Look at that. This is a perfectly serviceable mode. It's a humanoid dragon thing. 
and it looks pretty freaking awesome. I, I would not be surprised if a lot of people chose to display her like this. Okay, so the last thing is the head reveal. You pop the neck apart and pull it down to form like samurai shoulder plates. And then the dragon head does a grimlock and just kind of folds along her back like this. Yeah, does just about that. Then you pull her face up a little bit so that you can see her open mouth. And there is Ripclaw in robot mode. And, um, I don't know, the, the big tail coming out the back still kind of makes her feel not completely transformed. But, uh, she looks pretty... Look at, look at this face. That is... That is the most intimidating face I have ever seen. That, that looks... Yes, she, she's a... She's a... She may be a female, but that is not going to stop her from biting your face face off cuz she cuz she thinks that you're prettier than her and should not be. I mean, holy crap, that is one terrifying maw. Um for weapons, uh her the tip of her tail comes off leaving a little nub. See the nub? And then this becomes a handheld weapon. And, uh, just like this, you just slide it onto her hand. And then you kind of have, like, this big, giant arm. And it throws off the symmetry, because it's so huge and so hand-like. Like, if it, if it was a gun, then it would just look like she's holding a giant gun. But the way it is, it just kind of looks like she has a gigantic hand. Which is... Very scary looking. This is, uh... Yeah, this is this is Hasbro saying, yeah, we can make a female, but... Uh, we, we don't have to hold to any gender stereotypes, so ha. Yeah. This is, this is, uh, Ripclaw. She makes no apologies. <laughs> I can't wait to see her on the show. I'm, I'm actually really interested to see this character in action. Okay, so, um... Details in robot mode. Uh, you probably noticed the plastic has these yellow swirls in it. Uh, that's some kind of aesthetic where everybody has these paint swirls, probably recapturing the techno organic look from the uh, Beast Machines cartoon. Perhaps that's what they're homaging. Notice that instead of a Decepticon symbol, she has a Predacon symbol, which looks different. And um, She's pretty well painted. She ha she doesn't really have any large area of blank color that feels like it should have been picked out. Maybe a little bit on her tail, but there's enough sculpting there to keep me happy. And um yeah, she looks she looks pretty good. She looks she looks she looks fantastic actually. Um articulation. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can discuss articulation. Okay. Um, her wings flap, flappy flappy wings. Um, her shoulder pads are articulated at two points. This is so that they can get out of the way so her arms can get some more clearance for poses. Although they can look kind of silly up there. Uh, her head is on a ball joint but it's pretty deeply recessed. So she can't really do much more than uh, look up. Yeah, I can't even turn it. It's pretty deep in there. Uh, her shoulders, like I said, yeah, look at that, look at that. Silly, silly shoulder pads. The shoulders have this thing going on here, and then there's a ball joint. And then she has a swivel at the elbow, and a swivel below the elbow, which gives her wrist movement, and her wrist can go inward. Uh, I wish there was a bicep swivel, but uh, you kind of get a little bit of swivel movement thanks to the ball joint. It's just the swivel is below the elbow to allow her to go from dragon foot mode like this to robot hand mode like that so this is a transformation wrist joint and so there's no bicep swivel uh she has a waist joint right here yep yep nice waist joint we don't see enough waist joints anymore uh she has um ball jointed thighs uh she has a thigh swivel and she has a knee that goes 180 degrees you get a 90 degree bend out of it 
and she has ball jointed feet. Very good articulation. You can you can have this girl take on lots of pretty cool action oriented poses. There's thanks to the ball jointed knees and the thanks to the ball jointed ankles and the uh, and the great range on her knees. You can have her do pretty action oriented squats since she has her tail back there acting as a third leg. You can actually you actually don't have to worry about lining up her center of balance. So you can get her into nice display poses. So she so Strika not Strika. Um Rip Claw is just about everything you could want from a from a transformer. She has she has a good alt mode, a good transformation, a good looking robot mode, and she is highly playable and displayable. She pleases she she pretty much hits every single thing. So and she's a female. You know, we just don't have enough female characters in the Transformers canon. I mean, this makes her what? The third in Transformers Prime? Um Yeah. Uh I mean I, I wanna see I wanna see more female characters. I don't wanna see you know what? I said that I really wanted to see a G1 accurate RC made for the Generations line, but that's not enough for me. I want to see a deluxe version of Flame War, not just a Cyberverse repaint. I want to see Elita 1. I want to see Chromia. I want to see freaking, um, um, you know, I want to see a prime version of Thunder Blast and... And um, I'm, I'm pretty sure some people in the comments will come up with a dozen or other female Transformers that barely got any kind of mention anywhere. Uh, so yeah, let's see more female Transformers. And no BotCon repaints. I want this. I want retail deluxes available for all. Yeah. Come on, Hasbro. You can do it. This is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001 signing out.